Are you sick and tired of not getting your questions answered by Amazon experts? I've spent 10 years in the Amazon industry and these are some of the most common questions that I will answer for you that will actually help you make money with Amazon and Amazon FBA. If you don't know how to pick the best product to sell and if it doesn't do well, should you list multiple products? There's two ways to sell on Amazon. One is researching and, and listing brand name items. So you don't need to spend money on marketing and advertising and you do not need to focus on one product. You wanna sell a lot. If you're doing private label and you're paying these guys two grand for their guru course, they're gonna teach you Alibaba, private label, buy from China, buy in bulk, and spend all your time and money and efforts on a single product. This is the most difficult way to build an Amazon business. What I recommend is using my volume scaling method. I do have a video on my YouTube channel for the volume scaling method. I would recommend listing products in volume from suppliers like Rocktomic Labs, on-demand fulfillment that do private label, but they'll do the shipping and fulfillment for you. So you don't need to buy in bulk, you don't need to buy up front, and you're gonna list in volume. This is the best way to do private label, especially if you wanna keep costs down and start turning profit in a shorter period of time. So reading and understanding the data to understand and do your product research or your market research for selling products on Amazon. You can use tools like Jungle Scout, Helium 10, AMZ Snagger, but I like to use Helium 10 Jungle Scout. They will give you the data based on sales history. So you'll go to Amazon, you can get Chrome extensions for both Helium 10 and Jungle Scout. And once you have those set up, it will literally show you how many times it's sold in a month, how many competing sellers there are, and certain tools will even tell you how much certain sellers are picking up the majority of the buy box. So using these tools, all you really need to do is make sure how many sellers there are, how many times a month does it sell, and then how much per month or how many units per month do you think you can sell? Say, based on the data, I will then use my personal experience, which I have and you may not. I've been doing Amazon for a decade, so I'm able to look at other factors like how many times do I think a certain seller is getting the buy box rather than, because the software is never 100% perfectly accurate. So having experience and knowledge is going to arm you and help you become a way better seller. The tools do help a lot. They give you everything at a glance and they're very important to have. But what I like to do is be conservative. So if I have an item that I think sells, let's say it sells a thousand times a month, there's four competing sellers. Preferably Amazon's not there because if they're there, sometimes they can dominate the buy box and they don't share it, but sometimes they do and the tools can show you that. I like to make sure if I think I can sell 50, I'll order 30 or 40. It's really up to you, but that's how I like to do it. If you're brand new to selling on Amazon, you're just starting and you need to open an account, you need to be over the age of 18, you're gonna need a credit card for a charge method that you put on file with Amazon. You're also gonna need to use that uh, credit card to purchase from suppliers because 90% of the suppliers there are will be only taking credit card purchases. And then you need to have at least 500 to 1,000 bucks to build the business, depending on your strategy. If you're paying someone for a guru course and they're just teaching you private label Alibaba, you're gonna need thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. If you watch Supreme Commerce videos on YouTube where you have my Mastering Amazon course, which is a lot cheaper than these guru guys courses, you can start with 500 to 1,000 bucks. As a brand new seller, do you have restrictions? You do have restrictions as an Amazon seller. Now, there's gonna be a lot of categories you're not gonna be able to sell in, subcategories you won't be able to sell in. You also do not get the buy box or add to cart button for the first 60 to 90 days, depending how fast Amazon puts you in. Their policy says 90 days, but I've seen people get it faster than that. There's a lot of other, like, I would say gray area things that are quote unquote restrictions to new sellers that other people may talk about, like how much revenue can I generate in the first six months? It's going to be less because, you know, you're a new seller and Amazon won't let you sell more. Not true. If you're drop shipping, Amazon might throttle your account or they might suspend you and then make you jump through a bunch of hoops if you get too much sales in a very short period of time because that might come off as scammy. Maybe you're selling fake products so you're able to go a really low price, sell them in volume, get in there, sell a, you know half a million dollars worth of products in the first few months because that's what a lot of the scammers do and shut the store down, take the money and run. So in that scenario, if you're getting too many sales too fast, Maybe that is a restriction. Amazon might want to throttle you or slow you down or even suspend you, but only if you're doing things suspiciously. If you're buying products and sending them in bulk to Amazon FBA, Amazon's not going to suspend you if you generate too much income or revenue in the first six months. As long as you're you know, buying from proper suppliers, you have invoices, supply chain even. The restrictions of an Amazon FBA though, there is a storage limits. And over time, your storage limits will increase. Eventually, you can get unlimited storage with Amazon FBA. So in terms of is there restrictions that are gonna literally stop me from doing what I wanna do on Amazon? No, unless you're trying to specifically sell like a medical product or a supplement, you're gonna be gated in that right away and you're gonna probably have to have a lot more than just the invoices to get ungated for those as a new Amazon seller. Is there any hidden or secret fees or charges when selling on Amazon? So if you're doing FBM or you're fulfilling it yourself or the supplier's fulfilling it for you, you're not using Amazon FBA, Amazon only has a referral fee, which is anywhere from 8% to 15%, depending on the category 
category. I would say 75% of the categories on Amazon have a 15% referral fee, and then your $40 a month Amazon professional account fee. Those are the only fees to you as an Amazon FBM seller, and those will never change unless Amazon changes them at a later date themselves. Uh, with Amazon FBA, you have your referral fees as well as storage and fulfillment fees for Amazon FBA, which range. You can't really give it a percentage because depending on the size and the weight of the product, Amazon FBA fees can always change and vary. I, I would say they range anywhere from the 30% to 70%. So there isn't any hidden or secret fees, but there can be fees that will pop up at a later date. Let's say unfulfillable inventory, Amazon will ship that back to you and you will have to pay the shipping costs. Amazon will deduct that from your Amazon account balance. But other than that, there isn't really any hidden or additional fees you need to know about. The things you need to look out for with returns and refunds, if you're doing fulfillment yourself and you have, you're have you buying from the suppliers or if you're drop shipping and suppliers fulfilling it for you, then you're gonna need to make sure your supplier has a very flexible refund and return policy. Otherwise, it can eat you alive selling on Amazon. Another thing is that will affect your metrics if you're doing the shipping yourself and Amazon could suspend your store for that. But if you're doing Amazon FBA, Amazon's not going to suspend you for having too many returns. Um, you would just want to probably discontinue selling a product if it has too high of a return rate. So that's really the only thing you need to look out for in case of returns. That, and if you're using a supplier and they're shipping for you, you need to make sure you can return it to them if it's damaged, defective. So that way you're not actually taking the burden and the loss on that product. You have the supplier compensate you because they're the ones who originally sold you the product. Now, if you're buying from wholesalers and brand owners and you're buying in bulk and sending it to FBA and you get a return two, three, four months later, you're normally not going to be able to return that to the supplier. So your best option is to make sure is the item still in working condition or is it in bad condition but still works? Send it back to Amazon and sell it again or send it back and sell it as used. So that way you can try to make up some of the money you may or may not lose by getting an item returned to you that might potentially have to go to the garbage. So how do you handle customer feedback and negative reviews? I would say 90% or more of the customer service or negative feedbacks you will get on Amazon. Amazon FBA, when you let them do the logistics side, they will take responsibility for the majority of those and they'll actually strike those reviews through like if you get a one star negative feedback you have to go to that feedback and click um, remove feedback 90% of the time Amazon will strike that feedback through so this is the huge benefit of doing FBA if you're doing your own logistics and shipping yourself or you're drop shipping within policy on Amazon or shipping from your own home or your own warehouse unfortunately you don't have the ability to let Amazon strike through any negative reviews you have to work with the customer and try to get them to remove the review unless the review has cursed words, um, your personal information in it, or is 100% completely inaccurate and you can prove that it's inaccurate, which is a gray area in Amazon because Amazon normally likes to side with the customer. But these are the best tips you're going to get when it comes to removing feedback on Amazon with FBA. Most of the time, Amazon will just strike it through. Otherwise, you just have to do your best to work with the customer and almost beg and plead with them. If you wanna know what else I've learned in the 10 years of selling on Amazon and building the business in multiple different ways, make sure to head over to the Supreme Commerce Training YouTube channel where I extrapolate a lot more on all the stuff I know. If you want my help building your Amazon store for you, you have the money for the business, but you don't got the time. I build businesses for my clients. I've been doing it for years. If you want us to build the business for you, simply send me a message on Instagram or Facebook or send me an email at supremecommerce at outlook.com. Becoming an Amazon seller is a lot more simple when you have the right knowledge and tools and resources to build the business properly. My mastering Amazon training is about two to three times cheaper than the average guru course and it has about five times more value. If you want to have me mentor you and personally guarantee you results in the first 90 days, make sure to grab the mastering Amazon training from the link in my bio or supremecommercetraining.com.